Alhamdulillah Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah Maba' In light of the incident that happened yesterday with one of our brothers and two of our sisters uh, being murdered I wanted to kind of shed some light or try to bring some some sense to the situation oftentimes when things like this tragic tragic incidents happen we find ourselves scrambling mentally trying to make sense of the situation trying to piece together what happened to make sense for our own consciousness and in the process of us trying to make sense out of the situation sometimes we exclude the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is the nature of logic the nature of logic is to make sense out of a situation on its own without factoring in the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom is beyond our, our understanding what we see from the outside is only a portion of the whole picture and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that the believers are like jasad and wahid, like one body. And you oftentimes find in the Sunnah the Prophet ﷺ was always making references to body parts, making references to tangible, tangible things in creation that we can ponder and reflect on. And that's actually a part of our deen, tadabbur, wa tafakkur, wa ta'amul, you know, pondering and reflecting and contemplating. These things are part of our religion. And unfortunately, we live in a time where everything moves so fast. Technology has us moving as fast as it moves sometimes. And we don't take the time out to ponder and reflect and to include the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the scenario. But the Prophet sallallahu said that the believers, the example of the believers is like one body. Kajasadin wahid. That when one part of the body aches, when one part of the body aches, the other parts of the body begin to respond as well in unison with that ache. That the other parts of the body call for wakefulness, that the other parts of the body can't sleep either because that part of the body is in pain. And you think of, for example, if you have a toothache. If you have a toothache, what else starts to hurt? What else starts to ache? You start to get a headache. It starts to affect different parts of your head, parts of your brain, because it's all connected. There's a central vein in the body that connects all of the other veins in the body. That juggler vein, that one vein that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, that he is closer to the believer than their own juggler vein. That is the main vein in the body. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose that out of all of the other body parts to show his closeness to the human being? All right, and the, all the other veins are connected to that, that spread blood throughout the body. So when you think about that in relation to the believers and how they interact with one another, there should be one vein that connects all of the believers together, not the color of their skin, not their tribe, not their culture, not their ethnicity. The one vein that connects us all is Iman, our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes when a part of the body is removed or part of the body aches, it brings a heightened sense of awareness with the other parts of the body. If a person goes blind, you ever run into a blind person, an atma, his memory, his sense of recall, his memory, his dhaka, his intelligence has a heightened sense because when you lose one part of the body, the other parts of the body become, they have a heightened sense of awareness, right? So when you think about that in relation to us losing a part of our body, we lost three of our believing brothers and uh, three of the believers from this ummah yesterday or two days ago and in losing that is like losing a part of our body and now we have a heightened sense of awareness now and our heightened sense of awareness should be two things number one is our lack of fear of death as long as we fear death as long as we fear anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will make us fear the creation and I personally refuse to walk around my life live my life in fear 
when you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إذا خاف الله, that when you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, خاف منك كل شيء, everything will be in fear of you. When you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إذا خاف الله, خاف منك كل شيء, that when you fear Allah, everything fears you. Because you don't have, you don't give off that sense of timidity. You don't give off that sense of fear to other people. People can sense when you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you fear Allah, خاف منك كل شيء, everything fears you. But when you fear other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إذا خاف غير الله, خاف من كل شيء, that when you fear other than Allah, everything else you are in fear of. You are in fear of everything else when you don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the way that the Dajjal is able to take advantage of people through fear. Through fear. Which is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yushiku and tada'a alaykum al ummam That perhaps there is going to come a time where nations will gather against you. Just like a group of people gather around a plate of food to devour its contents. So one of the Sahaba said, O Messenger of Allah, is it going to be because we will be few in number? The Prophet said, Bal antum bi kuthur. You will be many, you will be plentiful. But you will have a disease. Lakin fikum al marad. You will have a disease. And it is karahiyat al maut. You will have a fear of death and a love of life. You will have a fear of death and a love of life. And that is where we are. As Muslims, especially those of us who migrated to this country from other places, we migrated here for the luxuries of America. To live a life of luxury here, we love life. We love it. And the fact of the matter is that we should be here for two reasons. Either one, for studies, or either two, to do da'wah, coupled with business. If we are here to live a life of luxury, we are here for the wrong reason. Sometimes we have to question ourselves, why am I even living in this society? Why am I living here? Why? Because the angels are going to question you in the state in which you die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that when the angels come to them and take their soul, qalu fima kuntum. The angels will ask you, in what land did we take your soul? Qalu kunna mustadha'afina fil ard. The excuse will be, we were oppressed in the earth. And the angels will ask, alam takun ardallahi wasi'ah fatuhajiru fiha. Isn't the earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spacious? Couldn't you have gone anywhere? Couldn't you have gone anywhere? When the man killed 99 people, the man told him, you can make toba to Allah, but leave this land, this is ardu su, this is an evil place, but go there with people who are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Removing yourself from the situation. The point that I'm making is that in, in this society, we lost three members of our ummah. And the heightened sense of awareness that we have now is that we can't, we can't do what we need to do here unless we're unified. That is the heightened sense of awareness. And that could have only happened with losing, because the fact of the matter is that death was decreed on those three 50,000 years before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought them into existence, brought mankind into existence. Death was already decreed. However, although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees death, how we die, we are in control of that in some instance. We have some control over that. Not only do we have control over that, shaitan also has some influence on that as well. And how we die is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the situation to bring an awareness to us that we will otherwise not have been aware of. Now Muslims, we see that we're all in the same boat together. It doesn't matter. The media gave absolutely no coverage. People put up websites and blogs in defense of the man who murdered, brutally murdered three people, execution style, praising him, calling him an American hero. With that, all of that, it's, 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 it's important that we do not, we are able to read between the lines and see exactly what is being said to us. And that is that as Muslims living here in this country, there will come a time where we will either be united and we will stand up for justice or we will be devoured one by one. 
So you can stay in your corner as a Sufi, as a Shiite, as a Sunni, as a Salafi, and all of these other fragmented groups and sects. Kullu hizbin bima ladayhim farihun. Every group and every sect, you know, happy and ecstatic with what they believe of the truth is with them. And we will be picked apart one by one, unless we unite. And that is the lesson that we learn from this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took one of our body parts to make the other parts ache so that we can be aware of a situation that we would otherwise not have been aware of. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a'lam. This is just some uh, observations from myself. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. However, in pondering and reflecting over this situation, this is the conclusion that I come up, that I come up with. That they were already decreed that they were going to die on that day at that time. However, how they died was something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to show us a weakness that we have and for us to use our faculties now and use our resources to begin to unite and begin to combat this, you know, this war against Islam here in America and in other places. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa